Welcome to your video on multi-step equations two. Today we're going to be focusing on equations that are going to use the distributive property. And the first thing in your notes is to fill out the steps. And we have quite a few steps here as this is the most involved equation solving process. We're going to start by simplifying the equation. And this can mean two different things. The first thing you're going to look for are parentheses. And if you see parentheses in the equation, you should look at what is directly in front of those parentheses because that's what will be distributed. Sometimes that'll mean adding in your negative one there if necessary. So take care of distribution first. Then you're going to look to combine like terms. Now this is really important. You can only combine like terms if they are on the same side of the equation. Remember to combine like terms, you simply just add the coefficients together. Once you've taken care of this first step, you've actually reduced it to an equation where variables are on both sides. So now you need to decide where you would like your variables. We usually recommend putting them to the left because that's pretty standard, but there's nothing wrong with moving them to the right. But once you start switching variables over the equal sign, you have to be sure to use opposite operations. Once you have the variables on one side, you now have a two-step equation. And so the first thing you want to do here is to undo addition and subtraction. So in other words, get rid of the numbers um, that are not attached to a variable. And then the very last thing is to take care of any multiplication or division. And I've put a reminder here, if there is a fraction, the best way to get rid of a fraction is just to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, we're ready for some examples here. Um, this first equation here does not have any parentheses, but we just wanted to review with you the, the combining like terms thing. So the first step is to simplify the equation. And right away I noticed that I have two terms on the left-hand side that have variables. So I can put those together. So I have a positive 9y and a plus 4y, which will make 13y. Everything else will come down. Next, I have variables on both sides. So I'm going to get all of the variables on the left-hand side by getting rid of that positive 7y. So we'll subtract 7y on both sides and then simplify. So we have 6y minus 8 equals 16. And now you're right back to a two-step equation. You would add 8 to both sides. So 6y equals 24 and then divide both sides by 6, and we get y is equal to 4. Now in these directions, it does say to check your answer. Um, we'll show the check on this first one and then just let you use your calculator for the rest. Um, remember when you check your answer, all you're doing is you're substituting the value that you found for the variable into the equation. So note how parentheses are being used here, and that's just to show that you're replacing the y with the 4. And then you just work on the two sides of the equation independently. So 9 times 4 is 36. Bring down the minus 8 plus 4 times 4. And then again, you're just simplifying. Now what you want to do is just simplify both sides of the equation. So take 36 minus 8 and plus 16. And then do 28 plus 16. And you'll see that the two sides are equal. Again, you don't have to write this work out every time, but it's a good idea just to pop it in your calculator. <laughs> All right, so next, we have an example that will involve the distributive property. This is kind of a roadmap problem here, because um, we draw a lot of arrows to kind of help you visualize what's going on here. That 4t out in front is something that's just going to drop down. So we're just going to put a little arrow to say that we're just going to move that down. Now, I want you to kind of put a bracket underneath or a loop or something to show that that minus sign is attached to that 8. So that is actually a negative 8. And what we're going to do with that negative 8 is distribute it to the parentheses. So I end up with a minus 8t and a minus 8. Some of you have learned plus a negative. Plus a negative is the same thing as minus, but it will probably be easier for you if you just always just write a minus sign. Okay, so our first step, simplify the equation we just distributed. Now we notice that we have variables that are on the same side of the equation, so we're going to combine those. Um, 4t minus 8t will give us a negative 4t. Everything else comes down. And now we don't have variables on both sides, so we can skip that next step. And we're basically just looking at a two-step equation. So we're going to add 8 to both sides, bring down the minus 4t. And I would say that um, a lot of people miss that negative sign in front of the 4t. Um, make sure that you are bringing down a negative 4t. Now we have to divide both sides by that negative 4. And remember that a positive divided by a negative is a negative. 
we won't write down the check here, but you could just put um, in your calculator, you could put in the negative four, just make sure you're using parentheses. Next example, we have a little bit of combining like terms on the left-hand side and some distributing on the right-hand side. So here we notice that 4x minus 1x, I'd encourage you to put that 1 in there to remind you that it's there. 4x minus 1x will give us 3x, bring down the plus 1, and then on the other side we're going to distribute the 3, so we have 3x plus 9. We do not have any like terms on the same side of the equation, so we don't have to worry about that, but we do have variables on opposite sides of the equation. So we are going to subtract 3x from both sides. Now here you're going to notice something a little bit weird going on. The fact that we had 3x on both sides and we subtracted 3x from both sides, our x's actually drop out on both sides. So we can just cross those off. And we are left with a 1 on the left-hand side and a 9 on the right-hand side and no x. So we really can't continue the problem. There's nothing more to um, do with the x. So what the heck's going on here? Um, when the variables drop out, and you're left with what's considered a false statement because 1 is definitely not equal to 9. In fact, put a slash right through that equal sign. That is not true. Um, that just means there is no solution. There is no possible x value that will satisfy this equation. So just to recap here, if your variables drop out and you have a false statement like this, it is just no solution. There's no way to solve this. You don't have to do any more work than that. All right, our last example here, we will be distributing, um, we will be combining like terms. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. So first, drop down your 16x and make sure that you notice that negative sign goes with the 3, so you're actually distributing in negative 3. So we've got minus 12x minus 21. On the right-hand side, the 6x is going to drop down, and you put in that 1 there because you will be distributing the negative 1. So now we have minus 2x minus 21. So we finished distributing. Now we have to combine like terms on both sides of the equation. So on the right-hand side, we're going to put the x terms together to make 4x. We're going to bring down the minus 21. And likewise, on the right-hand side, we're going to put together the 2x and, or the, sorry, the 6x and the minus 2x to get 4x and bring down the minus 21. So now we're looking at variables on both sides. We want to get all of the x's to one side. So you should subtract 4x from both sides. But you will notice right away the same kind of thing is going on here. Our x's are dropping out. We bring down the minus 21 on both sides. And this time, we can leave that equal sign there because negative 21 is definitely equal to negative 21. So this is considered a true statement. But we don't have any x's left, so we can't actually solve for x. But what that means is it doesn't matter what we put in for x because everything will work. So we'll always get something that's true. So what we say here is all real numbers. You can plug in any possible value for x, and it will satisfy this equation. So two kind of unique things went on here. We had a no solution. We had all real numbers. Just be on the lookout for that. Those two cases, again, only pop up when your variables drop out. This concludes your lesson on multi-step two. You can now get started on your work.